Why arm takeoffs? Number one, because there is no residual vacuum when the teeth cups come off the udder. Let's take a look at the other side of the story. You see, here's a no arm takeoff. The cow milked out just fine. We shut off the vacuum, no problem. But since we can't wait, we need to pull on the teeth cups right away to make sure they don't fall on the floor. Now, if you take a close look at this picture and take a look at the skin back there that's sort of stressed, there is no doubt these teeth cups are coming off under residual vacuum. Unfortunate, but that is a fact of life if you decide to go with a no-arm unit. I'm sure you have heard about the National Mastitis Council. It's a great organization here in the United States of America which sponsors mastitis research. And to the best of my knowledge, there were three projects done around the world over the last 20 or 30 years that were eventually publicized through the National Mastitis Council. And here's one of them. In 1973-74, thereabouts, a team of Israeli researchers came to the conclusion that an in increased risk of infection existed when the machine was improperly removed from the udder. Then, I think in 1978, a research team in England came to a very similar conclusion, namely, the vacuum must be shut off before the teeth cups are removed. And then again, a little later, Graham Mean, one of the best researchers in our industry from Australia, conducted a study on the influence of improper claw removal and mastitis, and he came to the conclusion that the way the teeth cups are removed is way more important than when they are removed. And finally, you may have heard about Dan Norlander, one of the uh, greatest mastitis researchers here in the United States over the last 20, 30 years. Dan has written a couple of books, and in one of them, and I think the title is A Production and Mechanics of Quality Milk, on page 36, Dan says, the teeth cups should never be pulled off with a jerk. Very interesting. Independent studies, all of them came to the same conclusions. Don't pull the teeth cups off under vacuum. And just in case you need one more, roughly three or four years ago, Dr. Dave Galton from Cornell University in uh, New York conducted a study on, new inf on the causes of new infections during milking. And he came to the conclusion that if there's a liner slip or poor machine removal, conditions are created to cause new infections. So, among all the leading researchers, all the leading mastitis scientists pretty much around the world, there is no argument that if the teeth cups are improperly removed, chances are mastitis infections occur. Take a look at this picture for just a second. I don't remember where we found it, but let's just say it was some 15 or 18 years ago in some dairy magazine here in the United States. This is how one of the big milk and machine companies at the time introduced their little rope unit to the market. They ran this picture to prove that that rope type takeoff could indeed milk cows automatically and remove the teeth cups from the udder. And would you believe nobody at that company noticed what was happening? Look at how those teeth are stretched from the residual vacuum. Fascinating, isn't it? So far, that's only one aspect of removing the machine automatically. Here's another one. Let's assume the teeth cups have come off the udder just fine. But you see, the claw still needs to be moved from the position underneath the udder to the rest position. And that's where arm takeoffs make a difference as well. 